So we could see from the previous two examples that while tree diagrams are nice for helping to organize our thinking about the problem, they can get a little unwieldy. As a matter of fact, I'm going to add a note back here on um, this page about tree diagrams. They're really generally only good for small samples, right? So you want to use small sample spaces. You can organize it with a tree diagram. Lovely. But anything larger than a small sample space, it gets kind of out of control. <laughs> and so we need another way to find the sample space size because the size of the sample space will help us determine the probabilities. We need that size of the sample space to be able to be our denominator right, for these values. So we need to know the 6 and the 8, even if we never figured out the tree diagram itself. So that's what the multiplication rule of counting does for us. It will determine the size of the sample space. It won't determine the sample space itself, but it'll determine the size of the sample space, which is the denominator for the probabilities. And we'll be able to find that without actually making the tree diagram. And that will be lovely. So and that's what I mentioned right here, the size of the sample space, which is the denominator for classical probabilities. Right? And it's the size of the tree diagram as well. It's how many branches you'd end up with that at that last step. So it lets us figure out the size of the of the sample space with out a tree diagram. Yay! I know, I know students don't love making tree diagrams. So this will let us find the denominator for those classical probabilities without making a tree diagram. Wonderful. All right, so how are we going to do it? Well, let's revisit the having children example. So if you're going to have children, and if we assume there's only two biological sex and male, female are the only ones possible, etc. So the first child, there's two, right? So that's the first child, two options. And then the second child, again, there's two options. And then the third child, again, there's two options, and so on, and so on, right? So this is the fourth child, this is the fifth child, and there's the sixth child. So we really want 2 times 2 times 2 because it's the multiplication rule of counting. You don't add them, you multiply them. So this is really 2 to the 6th power, which is 64. That would be the denominator of a probability. This is not a probability unto itself. What you're doing is figuring out the denominator of the probabilities. And I wanted to show you in Desmos how to do this. So you can do 2 times 2 multiple times, right? So 2 times 2, there you go. But that's a little unwieldy. So 2 to the 6th. Now, to the can be done with this key right here, with the A to the B key. So the A to the B key lets you do that. So you could take 2 to the 6th. The other option is the caret button. It looks like, well, actually, let me write it on the paper. Um, it's 2 and then caret. It looks like that. It's above your 6 on your keyboard. So you hit shift 6, that will do it. Shift 6. It's called a caret button. Right? Um, it's an accent in, in foreign languages that you might have seen. It's called the accent circonflex in, in French. Okay. So what about this one? We are going to randomly guess on a 10 question multiple choice quiz. Each question has four options. So for example, for the four options, that's like when you're given an A, B, C, D multiple choice quiz. Okay, so the first question, you have four options, A, B, C, or D. But the second question, you again have four options. And the third question, you have four options, and you multiply like that all the way across until the tenth question when you have four options. So you have four to the tenth power. All right, let me go grab Dasmos. So you can hit four, and then you can bring up the palette and hit that A to the B button. Right, the A to the B button is what it does. And then up here in that power, you can say tenth. Okay, so it's 1,048,000, right? 
I'm just going to hit this on in Desmos. There we go. All right, now what about a fair 20 sided die and a fair 8 sided die? Which, in case you're curious, that's what they look like. That's a 20 sided die, famous for um, role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons and things like that. This is an 8 sided die, also for the same types of games. Although these types of dice, as far as we can tell, were known back in ancient times. Um, I have pictures of, or there are ancient dice from ancient Greece and Rome that are 20 sided dice. It's kind of fascinating. So the 20 sided die would be a 20. There's 20 options for that die. There's eight options for this die. So 20 times eight would be 160. There's 160 options. Again, this is not a probability we're finding, but now we know the chance of a 17 and a six would be one out of 160. All right, the first year um, the state of Pennsylvania issued railroad memorial license plates. The license plates had a picture of a steam engine followed by four digits. Assuming that repetitions are allowed, how many railroad memorial plates could be issued? Okay, so let me just remind you all about what a digit is. A digit is one of these 10 numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right, give me your digits means give me your telephone number. It's the numbers that were associated with your phone. That's an old pop cultural reference. <laughs> there's also um, the digits of your, right, your fingers are your digits, right, because there's 10 of them, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? So that's what a digit is. So when they did the license plate like this, there's 10 options, right? So license plate has the first spot is 10, but the second spot, because they're allowing repetitions, because they say repetitions are allowed, that's 10 times 10. The third one will have 10, and the fourth one will have 10, which is 10 to the fourth. Right? There's four tens there, and that would be 10,000. That's a little trick you can learn in school, that when you take 10 to a power, it's always one by that many zeros. If you don't believe me, here, I can show you in Dosmos. Here, 10, a to the b, 4. See, 1 followed by 4 zeros. Simple as that. All right, now you're going to select three cards at random from a deck. Show both with replacement and without replacement. So let's do with replacement first. So with replacement, you're drawing these three cards. The first card has 52 options. The second card has 52 options. And the third card has 52 options. So we need 52 to the third. So I have to find what that is. All right, 52 to the third is 140,608. Desmos uses a tiny little space in there in place of a comma to help you. I don't know if you noticed that. All right, so now what about the other one? without replacement. So let me do that one here in blue. Well, that means you're not going to put the card back on the deck, which let's face it, that's how most card games actually work. So the first card had 52 options, but the second card, whatever card you drew is no longer in the deck. So there's now only 51 cards left that you can choose from. And then once you have your first and your second card delivered to you in your hand, for the third option, there's only 50 cards left. So that's 52 times 51 times 50, which is smaller, which makes sense. I mean, you don't have as many options when you're limiting yourself by delivering the card to somebody's hand. It means it's no longer there for everybody else or for that person, for that matter. Again, these are not probabilities. These are just the denominators of potential probabilities. I'll make a note of that. There. 
I mean, they can't be probabilities. Probability has to be less than one. Anytime a value is more than one, it's not a probability. So these aren't probabilities. What they are is the denominators of potential classical probability problems. So I could say, you know, what's the chances of this particular license plate then? And you'd say it's one out of 10,000. Or what's the chances of these three cards being delivered to you? It'd be one out of this, right? So they're the denominators of potential problems, but they're not probabilities unto themselves because they couldn't be. No probability can be bigger than one.